Okay, let's talk for a moment about the hype. Everybody's going to be hyping their stuff to you. And my friend, Suzanne Taylor, brought up a very good point about this whole issue and asked me to kick in. So this is where I kick in. Hype is everywhere. Online, there are so many people who are full of shit, their eyes are brown. I mean, damn. And my eyes are brown, but I'm not full of hype. Fact is that I ascribe to the same exact principle that I offer you as your own imposter fix. If you've done it, it ain't bragging. Just plain true. That comes not from me. I didn't invent that. That's from well over a hundred years ago. Will Rogers, great American storyteller. However, he was absolutely right. If you've done it, it ain't bragging. And the alternative, or actually the flip side of that, is the sheer amount of hype and bullshit that people offer you in order to try to convince you to buy their stuff as if they actually know what they're talking about, and they don't. Oh, they don't. But they have a solution. When you don't have any credibility and authority, you, if you have the money, you can buy credibility and authority. Hey everybody, look at me. I'm on the cover of Forbes magazine. Oh yeah? You can buy that. The company used to be finding the people who reflected the best practices and they would put them on the cover. But now you can buy your poster boy or poster girl opportunity to be on the cover of all sorts of stuff. There's some guy, I can't remember his last name, his name's Kyle, K-Y-L-E. Okay, he's one of many, many people who sells that crap. I will, for my fee, get you placed on the cover of all of these different magazines and then you can have that stuff advertised so you can see that there are all sorts of people who say i've been on the you know i've been a contributing author to you know cnbc um bought i've been on the cover of forbes magazine bought you know it's not real do these people who have purchased their opportunity for authority have something to say maybe do they have the experience absolutely not because they bought their way in and they didn't actually earn it by sheer blood and guts by actually doing it over the course of a decade or two or three or four's worth of learning curve that gave them the experience to magically be able to parse information that you need them to be able to parse and they can't do it but if you let them they'll take your money because if you don't do your own due diligence you're a sucker and you were born to fall under their spell and fall into their clutches <coughs> so there's various magazines, Brains, B-R-A-I-N-Z is one of them. You can buy your way into being on the cover of that magazine. Only costs a couple thousand dollars. Suze was given the opportunity to speak at some big thing. You've been selected. They send that you've been selected email or messenger notice out to thousands and thousands of people. And if you want to, you can be a speaker at their giant conference and put your name on something that says you were a speaker at their giant conference. You know what it costs? It's only $10,000 for every 15 minutes that you talk. What kind of bull shizzle is that? But... I'm going to step back here. This current trend, it's not invented recently. This has been done for decades, for thousands of years even. A hundred years ago, or a little bit less, there was the pay-to-play issues in the, rock and, in the early stages of rock and roll on radio. And that was a big thing in the United States pay to play you got 
your, you know, the record companies with enough money could simply pay the DJs to spin their albums, which became the hits. So it had nothing to do, or at least it had little to do with how talented you are and a lot more to do with whose heavy backing was being leveraged behind you. And, of course, that's the way of the world in many circumstances, so we can just take a look at that and say, yeah, this trend has just been carried forth into the social media world. And yet, the good old boy notion of who you actually know. Ah, oh, yes, the fine crew from Harvard, from Yale, from Princeton. And they are all about who you know and whose daddy is a, f is, you know, who, who's, who's, whose friend of yours has the daddy who can give you the leg up. It's all about the in crowd. And this is a notion of FOMO. Fear of missing out has everything to do with being part of the club, the golden members who have the golden opportunities that they can dole out for their own money and their own leverage, and then you owe them favors that they will recall or call in later, like so many Willy Wonka golden bars. And it doesn't start there. The age-old smoking clubs, the gentlemen's clubs in various big cities, especially dating back into, you know, various parts of older, you know, old Europe, you know, the high back chairs and the cigar smoking leather encrusted hardwood mahogany tainted clubs that reeked of the old boy syndrome, and it didn't even start there. Because, in fact, let's not forget that the church gave you an opportunity to tithe your way out of, or into salvation, out of the depths of despair and the darkness. You could literally buy your way into feeling good about the fact that the priest or the cardinal or whoever it was would give you, grant you, bestow upon you all of your fine values. Oh, yes, upstanding citizen. Nothing wrong with that child molester. He's given us a lot of money at the church. And that is all of the different, you know, compartments of the history and the lineage of exactly what we see now as so many people being so full of the bullshit because they can pay to gain the authority that they don't deserve, that you don't deserve to be inflicted upon you, and yet if you don't do your due diligence, you're a sucker. So when I tell you I've been on television, stages, and all the likes before an audience of well over two billion people worldwide, I actually have every right to say that and claim that because not only is it true, it's an understatement. And all the other people who have been doing this stuff for a long time who can lay claim to all sorts of valuable, essential, factual authority that they've earned can explain it to you in just so many words that it makes complete sense. But don't believe anybody just because they say they've been on CNBC. <laughs> All it takes is daddy's wallet. And then what kind of lessons, what kind of value are you going to be achieving from some privileged clown posing as a mentor, coach, or quote-unquote guru? Good luck at your own peril, believe them.